Well, since y'all liked last video so much, I figured I'd just talk about my truck a little bit because obviously you can see it has black fender. Well, used to be black fender. This don't match. Probably just a bunch of other things. Obviously by the previous titles. It's a 1993 four wheel drive, 1500 teal and beige, two tone, pretty rare color combo. Not like super rare, but definitely one of the not as common color combinations got a chevy 350 under the power barn 113,000 original miles and one of the best things if you know you know what g80 means i guess i should probably go back a little bit i got it damn i think over two years ago now went all the way to the worst dealership ever in princeton kentucky that's a whole another story that i guess i'll tell right now well i guess i'll just start with simple stuff first game over car care matthew you know what i'm saying hit it up with the old five percent front back well you can't even see back glass windows and 35 on the windshield also, you see what the dash is like. If you own a 94 or older, if you find a dash that's not cracked, you're a legend. The seat is honestly in really good shape. Obviously, there's some wear, but no rips, anything. I've taken the fucking door sill plates off, whatever you want to call these. Lifted up the carpet. Absolutely no rust in the floorboard on either sides. I'll show you under it later. Um, the only real place there's rust on this truck and keep in mind it is from Kentucky, is the driver cab corner, rockers, completely fine. No rust on the rockers at all. See the floorboard. Another place there's rust. The bed, I literally don't even know what you call these. Bed rails, bed support rails. These bad boys. It's really not even bad, just the paint's starting to flake off and it's starting to rust, but it's structurally fine. As you can see, <laughs> The frame is already starting to rust again. Um, pretty soon after I got it, I wire wheeled and painted the whole frame and it's starting to surface rust again. That was a huge job, took me forever to do. Oh, I don't even know how I completely forgot about this. Another thing, really soon after I got the truck, right, literally right under the driver door, the rear brake line, bam explodes and literally to this day this truck does not have working rear brakes so that's a you know it's fine power steering pump i think is i mean it could last another year two years five years but it's starting to make a little bit of noise damn get some new brakes bro So the main thing about this truck is, you see that right there? This is the, supposedly a factory fender, and it could be, bro. I literally don't even know. But how is that crinkled like that? You obviously can't even tell on camera, but you can see there's paint not there, and there's Bondo. You can see there's Bondo, plain as day. Why is there Bondo on the inner fender? Also, another place there's Bondo is... The tailgate and it's honestly pretty thick i mean it's, it could definitely be worse but yeah more bondo so that's nice look at how good this paintwork is man shoo wee son damn look at that high quality h2o man that looks so nice overspray on the bolts oh yeah just man this is the only place that clear coats peeling on this truck which is honestly pretty impressive not gonna lie Last thing is when I bought it, it had a really bad misfire and I could not figure it out. And I guess I'll just go ahead and, and start getting into stuff that I've replaced on the motor, but basically only at idle. And I could not figure out why. Did spark plugs, did, uh, hold on. So first, obviously started with spark plugs, did spark plugs, then wires, it kind of made it better, but not really. So then I did the distributor cap and rotor. And boom. 
fixed. Yeah, this is what the old rotor looked like, by the way. The contact literally completely gone. But yeah, so that finally fixed the misfire. I've done thermostat. I put a 160 in it. No EGR valve. Obviously, you see air cleaner, but I mean, that's who doesn't do that. Got the old Superstar Extreme battery. 800 cold cranking amps. Well, gotta take this mother. Yeah, you can see way better now. Breather, valve cover capped that off there used to be a line that would go here to here new ac compressor the old where the fuck is it? this was to the factory compressor so this is a whole different style thing with a new connector i might be like for 95 plus 95 and a half plus don't really know so yeah ac quit working and i'm pretty sure it's just a leak somewhere that was for the egr valve pretty sure i already said but valve cover gaskets crimped brake line is the only way my brakes work rebuilt the throttle body broke one of the injectors in the process so it has one new injector the old as vice grip garage would say terminator broccoli injection if you don't know which i assume most of you probably will but if you don't know stands for throttle body injected literally just means there's injectors in the throttle body and obviously nobody likes these, but I mean, they're, they're reliable. Don't get me wrong. They're definitely reliable, but yeah, nobody likes them. New radiator cap. New alternator. New throttle position sensor, idle air control valve. I drilled out the hole so you can actually adjust the idle like you're supposed to be able to. If you didn't know you could do that, there's literally a set screw in there, like on carburetors. You can literally just drill that out. No idea why it's in there. But yeah, you literally just drill it out and then you can set your idle like that. It has a whole new exhaust, new manifolds, gaskets all the way back. No cats, no mufflers. And comes out in front of the back tire, as you probably already know. Rebuilt the trans with some uh, Lucas, if you know, you know. New O2 sensor all the way down there. Professionally fixed the dash with super glue. And on this side, professionally fixed. Bought new headlights for it. I'll get into that in a minute. I clear coated the valve covers because obviously you can see all the paints coming off. So I literally just clear coated them. Don't ask. Yeah, the wire that goes to the starter was complete. It was like three different wires. So cleaned that up. Even put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on it new belt which really isn't a big deal kept the old one just in case because you never know always smart i don't even know how i forgot about this i adjusted the valves that was a whole experience and this isn't a big deal either but the water neck replaced i don't know how i forgot i adjusted the valves that was yeah i literally just started doing it after watching a vice grip video and i was like Pfft. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. And I messed up, but I mean, as you can hear, truck runs mint, so. I should have adjusted them from the get-go while it, the motor was idling, is what I should have done. Because as soon as I did that, it was just way easier. If you ever adjust your valves, do it while the motor's idling. Thank me later. Oh, one other thing I did to try and figure out why I was misfiring at idle, just because I couldn't figure it out. New ignition cool, and that was way harder to replace than it should have been. Yeah, I think that's finally it. So I guess I'll get into paint. So this is where the story gets interesting. Oh, one more thing. It had the chrome strips. Took them off because obviously, if you know, all they do is trap dirt, moisture, whatever, make rust, which might I add. But so yeah, this is where the story takes a so i'll just give a whole walk around first um so when i got it there was a little chip there no idea what happened there but big scratch there all the trim obviously the chrome gone oh yeah i forgot new gas cap paint wise hood you can see starting to go uh the roof yeah you can see that obviously you see that fender this little door ding right there was already here this is a story oh yeah it came with oh my god uh, stop bro 
little tie downs, wanted to take them out. And it was like one of the hardest things I've ever done. So all these scratches around this is from me prying with a screwdriver. I can't even explain. Like there was rubber blocks in there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No idea why there's holes drilled everywhere down the bed. It's literally not focusing. Why? Still not focusing. Holes drilled everywhere down the bed. It's actually just those two. Hold on, let me go to the other side. I don't remember that being there. Yeah, it's just these two. Did he have a chase rack on this? Dude, he might have had a chase rack on it. I never even thought of that until right now. There was also a bed liner in it when I got it. If you know, you know, once again, what these marks are from, bed liner. Wanted to take them out because the only thing that would happen is these scratches would keep getting worse and bigger and rust and yeah. This is where the story, like I said, takes a As soon as I get headlights for this truck, wreck. Sitting at a stoplight, I'm here, car in front of me. They turn, I turn. And there's a road right here that you can turn on that you can turn right to that goes to Waffle House, hotels, gas station, whatever, it doesn't even matter. We both turn right, we're both behind each other, and then he turns again, obviously I'm going straight. He turns, I keep going, and then he just, bam, whips, just whips a U-turn right in front of me. There wasn't even time for me to blink, bam. I was probably going like 25, 30 max. I mean, we literally just turned from a red light. So that's how come these that apparently don't even exist, you can't find them anywhere. Basically it just makes the fender look like it continues. Like square bodies don't have that plastic piece. The fender, the metal of the fender just goes down. Like what is in my eye? The metal of the fender just goes down. I don't know, they, like did they save a fucking dollar doing that? Like a wreck is why this fender's here, why this little valence plastic piece is black. As you can see how terrible of a job. I mean, drip, not even, even there. Yeah, how, how much of a perfect job I did clear coating this fender. Once again, don't ask me why I clear coated it instead of painting it. Literally don't ask, I have no idea. Cause it looks badass, that's why. And this is how I found out it was not original paint. As you can see right here, if my camera will focus worth anything, you can see a clear line right here where there's new clear coat. So not original paint, at least it's been re-clear coated. When I found out it wasn't original paint, it was just like a <laughs> moment pretty much. And now this is gonna stick out forever again. But yeah, another thing I did is I wanted the smooth bumper, right? And I honestly think this turned out in my favor because I love this 2500 bumper. Also, it was on the 1993 uh, Indianapolis 500, the Pace Truck Edition. It has this bumper. Um, some of the Z71 two-door Tahoes have this bumper. I think all of them might. Also, 2500s have this bumper, except they have the little guard things on them, little plastic things. I honestly like this bumper. But yeah, all in all, for it being a Kentucky truck, it's pretty damn clean. Like I said, only rust right here. And it's looked like that ever since I've owned the truck. Brand new body mounts. <sighs> yeah, you can see no rust on the floor. Barely some starting here. Don't know why there's rust on these, but there is. Yeah, this is the return fuel line. Look, I mean, I, I could just snap that, but it's a return line, so it's not getting messed with. That's what the brake line looked like, and the brake line snapped, like, right here area, like, right under the driver floorboard. Yeah, I'm editing this right now, and never realized how lucky I was that my brakes exploded as soon as I got home. Shoo! Look at that, baby! Wire wheeled the drive shaft, gave it some... Yeah, you can see it better here. Obviously, it's not it's not structural. Completely fine. But you can see starting to rust. I just call them bed rails. Literally have no idea what they're even called. I've already been over that. 
Don't know why I'm talking about it again. Bill stains. I know you can't see. Well, you kind of can, but front and rear, might I add. I'm pretty sure that's basically everything. At least everything that's relatively important. New Iron Blades. Um, I have a new spare tire, but I mean, who, who cares about that? But if I need it, it's new. It needs an alignment from the wreck. The alignment's not bad, but it needs an alignment. And I'm talking about steering wheel alignment, not like tire alignment, steering wheel alignment. Which I mean is the same thing, but it's not the same thing. If you know, you know, for the 10th time of me saying that. Another thing the dealership did before I uh, got the truck is new fuel filter. And when I replaced that fuel filter, the amount of just like rust particles in the fuel filter for I mean and, and it supposedly only had like a thousand miles on it or less. Yeah, just realized this also while I'm editing. All of the rust in the fuel filter for it being brand new literally is from the return fuel line. So I'm gonna get that fixed ASAP. Well yeah. I'm tired of standing in the garage. There's no breeze, hot as balls. If you live in Tennessee or if you live anywhere right now, if you're alive right now, you know it's hot. I've just been standing here for like 10 minutes, just looking around, sucking my thumb, biting my fingernails, picking my ass, trying to think of anything else and I can't. So, that is the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end to me speaking right now, through me talking the whole time and this probably being the most boring video ever, thank you so much. It's beyond appreciated. You are a true bozo. Peace.